Now, it's been three weeks since the military staged a coup in Myanmar and ousted the country's leader, Aung San Suu Kyi. And have a look at the protests in the country today. Demonstrators have held their biggest protest to date. These pictures are from Yangon, where it's estimated hundreds of thousands of people took part. And that's in defiance of a clear threat from the military, which said protesters will suffer the loss of life if they continue. Well, here's more from BBC Burmese reporter Nain Chan A in Yangon. Despite the threat of being shot or getting arrested, there is no sign of becoming less intense and even drawing more people out there, including many civil servants. As you see, protests show their sheer grit and determination to take down the regime. There is, however, a raising key question whether the junta would use excessive force again against those who refuse to live or walk under the military regime. Well, as we heard there, the military has been relatively restrained in Yangon, but there have been protests all over the country, and in some smaller cities, there have reportedly been hundreds of arrests. Have a look at some of the other protests from uh, Mia Kina in the northern state of Kachin to Lashio in Shan State, the ancient town of Bagan, and Tongji to the southern town of Dawei. And in the capital, while well, you can see the army blocking this huge road, so protesters crowded onto smaller streets, walking and chanting, demanding that the military hand back power. Well, there are lots of important numbers today. Here's the BBC's Katie Silver on how many demonstrators have been out and why these gatherings are being called the 22222 protests. So while it's hard to estimate numbers, some there are suggesting hundreds of thousands, potentially up to a million people are taking to the streets. And it's across the country, from Yangon to Mandalay and Napier Door. Now, the reason for this, or why today is particularly important, is because it's the 22nd of February 2021. So that's a lot of twos, two, 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 two. And dates are seen as auspicious in Myanmar. It's not the first time, for instance, that we've seen protests there based on the date. Well, today, Facebook has removed Myanmar's state-run MRTV and MRTV Live pages from uh, its platform for repeated violations of community standards. If you search for the MRTV pages on Facebook now, well, this is what you'll see. And this could make announcements from the military less widely read and shared in Myanmar, given the volume of people who use Facebook as a primary source of information. Well, Freya Coles, a reporter and producer here on BBC World News, she's also been following the Myanmar coup and how it's been playing out in social media for the last few weeks. Um, first of all, your reaction to this move by Facebook? Well, Roz, it's, it's an interesting one. It's actually played out over the course of the last two days. As you say, Facebook has removed state media pages. Yesterday, it removed the military's main information page from Facebook. Now, considering 25 million people use Facebook in Myanmar, it's regarded as the main source of news and information in the country. This will come as a, a significant blow to the military. The reason Facebook has decided to act now is the state media broadcast passed a threatening statement last night saying that any confrontation with protesters will put lives at risk. Facebook says that is the breach of their community standards. But Ros, I suppose it's worth noting at this point, it feels a little bit like a game of whack-a-mole. Uh, Facebook is a huge platform. It's incredibly hard to regulate. There are still pages linked to high-ranking military officials. But I suppose it, it is a step in the right direction for those who want to stop the spread spread of misinformation and see democracy restored. And so that's going on, but there's a broader context, isn't there, that there have been a series of internet shutdowns? Yeah, the, the military, or the Tatmadaw as they're known locally, has been using internet censorship and restrictions since the very beginning of this military coup back in February 1. It's enacted a new cyber law, which means every internet service provider in Myanmar must shut down the internet from 1am to 9am. Uh, and we're seeing this happening every night. It will happen again tonight for a ninth 
uh, overnight in a row. And for one, to, to really simplify that, it's simply pulling the plug on the entire country's internet mm. service. Even people who use a foreign VPN will find it incredibly difficult to get a connection during these hours. But uh, on top of this, there are other measures in place as well. I know that there are restrictions on thousands of IP addresses like web, uh, Wikipedia, for example. And, and so this appears to be a tactic used by the military to limit access mm -hmm. to information uh, within Myanmar. And there, there is a huge outcry within the country. And you've spent a lot of time in the last three weeks on social media communicating to people in Myanmar, people who are involved in these protests. What have they made of the situation they've reached with these huge protests going on, but also with severe threats from the military? Yeah, I've been speaking to hundreds and hundreds of people within Myanmar. They're mostly young people who have flocked from Facebook to Twitter in search of new information, foreign journalists and human rights activists. And there is an overwhelming sense that they will continue to rally in the streets until they see the release of Aung San Suu Kyi and her democratically elected government. Now, we know Aung San Suu Kyi is a controversial leader for her handling of the Rohingya crisis. But I think what's interesting today, Roz, on social media is there's a lot of young people saying they didn't do enough to stand up for the Rohingya people and that they'd like to see democracy restored so the country can move forward and be united. And while that is a great sentiment, at the moment, there's no clear end in sight to the situation in Myanmar. These protests are growing. There's a huge groundswell of digital activism, but the military is showing, showing no signs of backing mm -hmm. down either. And, uh, and this is something we'll be watching over the, over the next coming days. Freya, thank you very much indeed. Those of you watching, do follow Freya on Twitter, Freya Cole, if you'd like to get updates on the situation in Myanmar. Now, European Union foreign ministers have agreed today to introduce sanctions against the military in Myanmar over its seizure of power. We've just been discussing it. Here's Josep Borrell, the EU foreign affairs representative. Today we have decided a set of targeted measures with ministers in response to these events. When we took the political agreement to apply sanctions targeting the military responsible for the coup and the economic interest. All direct financial support from our development assistance to the government's reform programs is withheld. In Brussels. Jean, what did you make of that move on Myanmar? Yeah, so obviously that was EU foreign ministers meeting in Brussels today to discuss a whole host of things, but Myanmar very much near the top of their agenda. You know, they, they were strong words today on Myanmar, of course, saying that they found the developments very worrying that they strongly condemned what they saw as unacceptable violence, the violence that we've seen there in recent weeks. And as you just played, Ross, they are prepared now to look at sanctions targeting the members of the military that they believe are responsible for this coup, so the military leaders. And the key thing they want to do is to try and starve them of their economic power. So one thing we heard is that they are going to look to suspend all the funding that they give directly to government development and support programs. Mm -hmm. Now, clearly, this comes with a worry that by starving the military and by starving the development programs in this way, you impact people and society. There was a commitment, though, from the EU today that they're going to continue working with people to try and make sure that they provide them with the basic amenities mm -hmm. that they need, but at the same time, whilst trying to have the biggest impact on those coup leaders.